has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Hope you all are having wonderful holidays. Christmas was awesome. I'm so thankful for my Christmas. And I have to show you a couple of my gifts. Because Christmas is the time of giving. And I did get some wonderful little gifts. This is for my sister. And it says, When I am afraid, I will trust in you. That cute. Yeah, I just think that's the cutest thing. I appreciate that, sissy. That's from my sister, Pat. And this is from my daughter. And I'll show you that last. I like this the last. So I was thinking, what do I really love in life? And one of the things I truly, truly have loved in life or my dolls. I've always had a thing for dolls ever since I was little. When my dad and I used to go to the flea markets in Cape and Jackson area and go shopping for flea market stuff. And then I would find me a doll and it was like the best thing ever. Anyway, I never told anybody these thoughts. No, I didn't tell my, anybody these thoughts. But that's what I was thinking recently. And then for Christmas... I couldn't believe it. My, my daughter got me this for Christmas. Can you believe this? It is a Cabbage Patch doll. I don't know if anybody remembers the Cabbage Patch dolls. Of course you do, right? Because they were such a big hit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But, um, yeah, that's, that's what I got. She was helping a doll maker um, in fix her computer and an elderly lady and this elderly lady wanted to give it to her and uh, so she took it and she thought of mommy who just loves dolls so that was awesome so then she gave me one more gift that um well two she actually gave me two gifts we got a pedicure date uh in the future me and her so that's one of gonna that was one of her gifts so she's gonna buy me a pedicure and we're going to go together and hang out and have lunch and that's all from my daughter so I thought that was awesome but this is the awesomest gift she gave me and you're going to like this especially family who knew Joe and Joe was awesome he was he was an engineer he was a pilot he was a husband he he was uh, just an amazing amazing man and my heart uh, misses him my heart misses him, but here I here's what I got. Isn't that sweet? That is a picture of my brother. And I hope he had a great Christmas in heaven with his mom and dad this year. All right, we lost him in June, and yeah. Anyway, so now let's see. Good news. We need some good news still, always. So, quick little shuffle. And then we're going to do a few minutes of, of exercise, and then I'll let you go. But I hope you're listening. I hope you watch and get your body warmed up, because that's what I need. I know. I know I'm stiff. I know I'm not flexible. And I know if I do this, I'm going to feel amazing, because I always do. And you will, too. And I love to share. So, all right. And they say the best gift of all is yourself. So I want to take that advice wherever I got it from, and give you myself all right all right so here we go what it is came up eddie allen updated his status okay eddie, my son okay now i got should have put it on airplane mode huh anyway the words of eternal life many of his fathers this is john one page uh john says many uh john what john uh what verse uh, i think seven I'm sorry this is going to be John 6, uh, 60, 60. Many of his followers heard this and said, the words of eternal life, this teaching is too hard. Who can listen to it? Without being told, Jesus knew that they were grumbling about this. So he said to them, does this make you want to give up? Suppose then that you should see the Son of Man go back to the place where he was before. What gives life is God's Spirit. Human power is of no use at all. The words I have spoken to you bring God's life-giving spirit. Yet some of you do not believe. 
Jesus knew from the very beginning who were the ones who would not believe and which ones who would ones which one would betray him. And he added, This is the very reason I told you that no man can come to me unless the Father makes it possible for them to do so. Because of this, many of Jesus' followers turned back and, and would not go with him anymore. So he asked the twelve disciples, I told you I should have turned it off. He asked your twelve disciples and you would and you would mm, sorry. Because of this, many of Jesus' followers turned back and would not go with him anymore. So he asked the twelve disciples and and you would would you also like to leave? Peter Simon answered him, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give you have the words that give eternal life. And now we believe and know that you are the Holy One who has come from God. Jesus replied, I chose the twelve of you, didn't I? Mm -mm -mm. Sorry, guys. Yet one of you is a devil. He was talking about Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. From Judas, even though he was one of the twelve disciples, was going to betray him. Okay, so, anyway, my Christmas present is texting me. <laughs> but hopefully he can wait ten minutes, right? Alright, so, we are going to exercise now. And here we go, okay? Um... So, I'm going to have us listen to Mother Angelica, because I think she's awesome. And, yeah, I think you'll like her. So, I hope I can get it to come back on real quick. Um, so, oh, another present my daughter got me was this thing that holds the phone. So, it's awesome. So, I can, so I can, you know, put the phone wherever I want. So, here, I'm going to turn it down just a little. There we go. And... See if I can get my head in there. Let's go up a little. Oh, it's hard to get adjusted here. All right, I don't know. <laughs> my head's cut off. We're trying. Anyway, yeah, okay. We'll turn it back up a little. I gotta get everything in there, but I was trying to get a full screen there. So, there we go. We'll make it work. Mother Angelica, are you there? All right. So, come on, get up and exercise. Brought to you from the Eternal Word Television Studios in Birmingham, Alabama. Just follow along. Hi there, we just had a lot of fun. I was talking to a great group here from Ohio and many other places too, but in Philadelphia, and I was talking about Pashuk in Philadelphia and the Italian market. And I used to go there when I was a kid. And the Italian market is like no other. Uh, they don't even have many like that. You got, uh, I was telling them you got bacala here. You don't know what bacala is? It's dried codfish. I mean, the stuff is about that big and that wide. And you can smell it. <laughs> <laughs> A block down. <laughs> But what, what, what used to fast 
fascinate me is they would have the baccala here, and then it'd have chickens hanging there and ham and prosciutto, and you're all full of flies. <laughs> and, and nobody cared. You know, one woman would go up and say, I want that one. It was all full of flies. You'd think it was full of pepper and something. All of a sudden, you go reach it, all the flies would go around. <laughs> You know what amazed me? Nobody got sick eating that stuff. <laughs> now they're so hygienic, everybody's sick. <laughs> and so uh, then you go right next to the baccarat was a place where they sold dresses. And if you got a bargain, there were dresses piled up like this. And in one place I, I saw he had uh, he had Dry, or one of the dry smoked uh, chicken here, dresses here, shoes here, <laughs> and bakala <bacala> there. <laughs> it, it's a fascinating place, and I, if you go on a tour, go to Philadelphia Italian market. <laughs> you get bargains. The wonderful thing is. The flies are still there. <laughs> anyway, a couple of people have written and said, Mother, uh, would you answer my letter on the air? Because I cannot receive an answer by mail. So I don't want you to think everybody that writes, I read your letter on the air. You know, I'd be here till doomsday. Now, this woman wants to know. Um, her mother is very elderly. And she, she's been taking care of her mother for a long time. Her husband has agreed to that. And her brothers and sisters are yelling and screaming about it because they want her to be put in a home. And the woman says, here, you know, mother, she said, I want to take care of my mother. She, I, I will not let anyone dissuade me. Am I wrong? If you're giving your mother tender, loving care, and maybe there's some things you can't do, but you know, the touch of one you love is felt and understood by those that are sick. I'm not against uh, nursing homes, a convalescent home. But since the Lord has made it on your heart to take care of your mother, every time you touch her, every time you bathe her, every time you touch her, it is the one that says, Honor in thy father and thy mother. Maybe you're putting a guilt trip on your brothers and sisters. Maybe they need a guilt trip. <laughs> Go ahead, don't worry about it. You do what your situation, the amount of care you want to give your mother. She was not going to last too long. She, she knows where she is. And doctors will say, you know, even those in a coma, their hearing is a last to me. And people have told me that the doctor pronounced them dead. And they could hear everything around. They were dead a lot. So I want to tell you, go ahead. Take care of your mother. Give her a smooch for me. It is another sad letter. And I think you probably, this woman works for NIH, that's the National Institute of Health. And now they want to start proposed embryo research. Basically, it says it's okay to view embryos as strict material for scientific research. 
in the test tube. They will produce babies, embryos, and after four weeks, they will dispose of them. Well, my friend, she said, would you tell your audience? Yeah, I will. You see, Paul VI said way back, when he came out with Omari Vite. He said, once, once you uh, approve of uh, birth control, then you will approve of abortion, and then you will approve euthanasia, and all of that has been done, and now you will approve of embryo. And people will sell these to doctors to experiment with, and then, they will dispose of them. Well, we're really asking the Lord for a lot of trouble. If you remember Sodom and Gomorrah, well, this world is much greater and worse than that. And so I ask you to voice your opinions to your senators and your congressmen and say, look, we don't want scientists to experiment on embryos. We don't want that. And another article here, they want to insert the embryo into animals to see what happens. You see how far we've got? Do you understand how far we have gone? Well, my friends, i get close to Jesus if I were you, because one day he will say, enough is enough. We've ever had so much for you. Car sisters this morning asked me at, about a little passage here in St. John's Epistle. It's the first epistle of St. John, second chapter. And he says, you know, we all want to be sure of everything. Do you ever want to be sure of something? Yeah? I want to be sure. I want to be sure. I want to be sure. Well, St. John says, we can't be sure that we are in God. Only, I like these little words, don't you? They really get to you. If and only, you gotta watch them. Looks like you're getting a lot and all of a sudden it says if or but or and. This one says only. When one claims to be living in him, is living the same kind of life as Jesus did. How do you like that, huh? Oh. See, we can only know that. If you if you want to very it's the first chapter epistle of John, not the, not the gospel, and it's the second chapter where we can be sure. Sure. Now if we look around here a little bit, we find something else. It says here that we can also be sure that we are pleasing to the God to God when we do his will. Ah. You know, our dear Lord, we're so what can you say? He was so steeped into the will of the Father. Okay? That nothing else mattered to him. That's the beauty of doing God's will. See? And you say, how come so many prostitutes and, and, and so many of these people seem to, to flock to our Lord? Why did they, why was he so patient with these people and so hard on the Pharisees? Because they were repentant. They knew they had problems. They asked forgiveness. See? 
And the Pharisees, oh, they didn't need forgiveness. They tithed, they, they gave to the poor, they fasted. They were perfect. And to the Lord, he said, you don't let anyone else go in the gate because you're not going in the gate. He said, you're like your father who was a liar from the beginning. Well, disobedience is a lie. See, you got to understand that whenever we're disobedient, we buy a lie. You see? St. John says here in another place, if you say that you do not commit sin, you call God a liar. Did you know that? You call God a liar. What's that? All right, I hope you enjoyed listening to Mother Angelica while I exercised. Um... It is true about that coma thing and your mother, my mother was in a coma and uh, I was talking to her and tears were rolling down her eyes, but she was in a coma. But, so be careful what you say around the family that is in that situation, you know? So, all right guys, Mwah. love you and uh, happy new year. See you.